When you first log into the inspection app, you will see a variety of options on what we call the home screen. You will see sites, customers, inspections due, the diary functions, adverse weather inspections, in progress, the QR code scanner, and the sync. You will also see in the top right hand side signal indicator and the settings menu. Open the settings menu and you will see an indication of user, the version of the app that you're using, the home screen shortcut to take you back to the home screen, the settings menu and the logout. Click on settings and you will see your data settings and your reset cache and data settings as well. Please note before using this option, make sure you've synced up any uh, recently completed work. Anything unsynced will be deleted. Click on sites to open the site screen. Here you'll see a list of all the sites you have been assigned to. You will also note there is a search bar at the top of the screen to locate sites quicker and easier and also an add site button at the bottom of the screen to add a new site to the software. <clears throat> Click on the site you wish to open and you will be presented with a summary of the areas. You can also search areas using the bar in the middle of the screen and you can add additional areas using the bar at the bottom of the screen. You can also assign a site photo for reference. Click on the area you wish to open. Here you see the scaffolds within that area. You can search them using the top bar and you can also add additional scaffolds using the button at the bottom of the screen. Click on the scaffold you wish to open. Here you will see the scaffold summary screen. Here you can view the scaffold status uh, as well as the on hire status for the scaffold. You will also be able to complete inspections edit or view the next inspection date, create diary entries for the scaffold in question, edit the scaffold details or dismantle the scaffold. To add a site, click the add site button at the bottom of the site screen. Here you will open a secondary form with a variety of options required to complete the site process. First, set the site location by searching in the top bar and click Done. Work your way down the form, entering the company that the site is for, the site name, choose the company the site is for from your customer list and click Done. You need to assign a contact to the site to receive the inspection reports. Click contact name and you can choose a contact from your phone's contacts or you can add one manually. Click done. Enter the contact email for the recipient. Please ensure this is a valid email address so that the inspection reports reach their intended destination. The final option is to denote whether you're going to manage stock control on the site. The software contains some rudimentary stock control features, more information of which can be found in the user guide. For the purposes of this, I'll click No. Click Done to create your site. You can now add a photo of the site for reference and add additional areas to the site to help organise the scaffolds within. If you click the Add Area function, this will allow you to create an area title and save it into the site. The areas represent physical locations within the site perimeter that allow you to organise the scaffolds and find them easier within the software. You can add multiple areas to a site depending on your requirements for organisation. Once you've finished you can open one of your areas and add a scaffold to allow you to then inspect it. To add a scaffold you need to ensure that the scaffold name has been set. 
and that all the options have been completed as required by the form. You can add a QR code at this stage as well if you have one present. Click Done. Now you can take any other actions that you would require to with the scaffold such as carrying out the inspection or setting the next inspection date. The next section allows you to search for scaffolds by customer. You can select a customer from your contact list and view the sites that are associated with that customer to locate the scaffolds within. The next section is the inspection due section. Here you will find an overview of all the inspections you have due for the next seven days. If we click on today, we can see there are 23 scaffolds due for inspection today. When we open up today's list of inspections, you'll see scaffolds organized by site and we can click on a scaffold to complete the inspection. This is the inspection screen. Here you can see the reason for inspection. You can add a defect, you can add a photograph and you can add comments pertinent to the inspection. To add a defect to the inspection, click the defect option and it will take you to the defect screen. The bullet points down the left hand side will show as amber, red or green to denote whether they are mandatory or not. Any options that are amber or red will need completing before you can submit the inspection. Green signifies that it's done and grey is optional. Click defect to open the list of defects available in the software and choose the defect you wish to add to the inspection. Next you can set the defect status and choose from fixed, remains or unsafe which will determine the outcome of the inspection. You can also add photographs or notes to the defect for more detail. Click done. You can also add additional defects or click done to return to the main inspection screen. Once all mandatory options have been completed and everything is green, click done to proceed to submit the inspection. You'll see a summary view and a tap to sign button to add your signature to the inspection. Simply sign the screen of your phone to do this. When you're done, click submit and this will complete the inspection. Final stage is to select who you have reported the defects to from your customer contact list which will have been created on the web console when the site was set up. Click done. That inspection is now complete and we can return to the home screen or choose another inspection. Sometimes defects can be added in error and these need to be removed before submitting the inspection. Click on defects to open the defect list. To select the defect you wish to delete, click the small bullet point to the left of the defect. When you click on this, the option to delete will appear from the bottom of the screen. You can also select multiple bullet points to delete more than one defect at a time. Once you've selected the defects required, click delete and they will be removed from the list and we can click done to return to the main inspection screen. Sending unsafe scaffold reports. Sometimes when completing an inspection, we log a defect that is registered as unsafe and the scaffold needs to be red tagged and prevented from use until this has been rectified. Select unsafe from the scaffold status when adding the defect. When we click done, we go back to the defect list, done again to go back to the main scaffold inspection screen. Click done to submit the scaffold inspection. Scroll down and sign the inspection report. You can see the summary clearly denotes that it is an unsafe scaffold and not a normal inspection result. Sign as normal and click submit. The inspection has now been completed However, the app will prompt some additional actions. It will want to know who we've reported the unsafe defect to, what the inspector's recommendations for the repair of that defect are, which you can type into the text box and press done, and finally, what the remedial actions required are, who is to carry out the remedial actions, what the action is, 
and when the defect is to be rectified by. Click done. And the final option is to generate an unsafe scaffold report. We can click no on this option and not send an unsafe scaffold report and just send the normal inspection report with the rest of the inspections. If we click yes, it will generate an unsafe scaffold report and email it out more urgently. You need to select who from the contact list is going to receive the email. Pick the recipients for the email of the unsafe scaffold report, click done and click done again. This will now open an unsafe scaffold report preview. You can sign this as the inspector and you can also obtain a signature from the scaffold supervisor and the customer. Press submit to produce and send the unsafe scaffold report. The inspection and unsafe scaffold is now complete. If you have an active mobile data or Wi-Fi connection, the app will sync automatically every few minutes in the background while you've got it open and you're using it. To manually sync, select Sync and Start Sync, and this will automatically download information from the web console and upload the work that you have completed. We recommend you do this both before you start and when you finish work to ensure everything's uploaded. The next section is the diary function. Here you can record diary entries for a scaffold that are unrelated to the inspection or handover. Choose the scaffold and you will see that you can add categories, notes, multimedia entries and the percentage standing and record that to be saved on the web console for future reference. You can upload photos, videos or audio. You can also use the media with transcription service to have a text file associated with videos and audio that you record. The next option is to choose the adverse weather inspections and choose the weather type that you have experienced. When scaffolds are created on the web console or within the app you will be asked whether they are affected by adverse weather or not and if they are, when you choose this option they will appear on this list for you to complete an inspection. The next section is in progress. This is where any draft or incomplete inspections will be stored. If you start an inspection you can save it for later to be opened and submitted at a later stage. The scanner allows us to scan a QR code to retrieve a scaffold from the database. First, you need to assign a QR code to a scaffold to allow it to be retrieved later on. To assign a QR code to a scaffold, locate the scaffold within the app, go to Edit, open the scaffold details and scroll down to Add QR Code. Use your camera to scan the QR code and then click done. You can then click done again and done to come out of the settings and return to the home screen. The scaffold is now assigned to that QR code. If you use the scanner option on the home screen and scan the QR code, the software will automatically open the scaffold that you assigned to it earlier to allow for ease of inspection. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoy the usage of the apps. If you have any further questions or queries, please don't hesitate to contact the support team on 01202 603 733 or support at cads.co.uk. Thank you.